Hello, my name is Rick and welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I tend to review products that are under $25, so if that appeals to you in any way, I'd recommend subscribing below and following my Instagram at rickskin underscore. So before I even start this video, I'd like to give a big thank you to Michelle at Lab Muffin Beauty Science for providing a literature review of several academic papers in a very digestible way. So I was trained to read peer-reviewed academic research as an undergrad in psychology, but within these papers, I was confronted with a lot of units, instruments, and measures that I wasn't familiar with. And on her blog, she presents them, she gives examples, and it just makes it really easy to understand and more easy for me to relay it to you guys. So a big thank you to her for that. And at first, just like right off the bat, like to elaborate on what exactly up to this point we have learned in research so far. We only really see inflammatory concentrations of UV filters in the ocean and high tourist traffic areas. So basically what you'd expect on really populated beaches and stuff like that where there are corals nearby, that's where we're seeing the most destruction and that's where we need to be the most careful about what we choose to protect ourselves with from the sun. So there are a whole bunch of UV filters. Some have been determined to be safe, some are unknown, and some have been shown to be inflammatory. And I'm gonna have those in the description below. I'm also gonna have all the references for all the information I'm relaying to you guys down there. And now I'm gonna go into the pathway or the theorized hypothesized pathways of how sunscreen ingredients actually create problems for the coral reefs. One hypothesis is that the UV filters at a certain concentration create a favorable environment for cyanobacteria that allows it to outcompete algae. And the algae live on the corals, that's, a, that's what actually gives them the color. And when the algae or the corals get stressed, they essentially just, it disrupts their symbiotic relationship. So the algae feed the corals through photosynthesis and then the corals provide protection. And when that relationship is disrupted, both suffer horribly. And the reason that's bad is because algae specifically provides 30% of the Earth's oxygen. And most people like to focus on the terrestrial plants, like trees, stuff like that, obviously. But the ocean covers a larger percent of the Earth. There's a host of organisms that do photosynthesis within the ocean, so we need to really protect the biodiversity there as well. In one paper, it actually um, proposes that one of the inflammatory ingredients is zinc oxide, or zinc ions specifically, and I know zinc is usually touted as like the reef safe, the non-nano version, but to me like zinc is zinc, no matter what the particle size is, and particle size does matter because the smaller it is, the more easy it is to infiltrate into more vulnerable areas and cause more damage but once again zinc is still zinc and it's still able to give off zinc ions and another paper actually says that the more acidic environment there is the more zinc ions can be released and what's happening right now with global warming is that a lot of carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the ocean through gas exchange so you know with rainforests burning like algae are starting to die we're having less organisms that do photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is how plants make their food. In the process, they convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. And when there's less organisms doing photosynthesis, there's more airborne carbon dioxide. And that is basically absorbed by the ocean and it makes it more acidic. And this wasn't in any of the papers. This is just kind of my thinking. This isn't like in research or anything. But if we're creating a more acidic environment, in the ocean and there has been a trend of more zinc ions being released in acidic environments i think it's a, it's going to exponentially increase the problem so i know zinc oxide is kind of the standard for being broad spectrum and reef safe but titanium dioxide is actually it's been found to be the least inflammatory mineral sunscreen ingredient i'd actually filmed this whole thing yesterday but it was kind of a mess, there was a bunch of cuts. I really just kind of wanted to provide this information in a more consolidated form because I was finding myself having to give supplemental information through like titles and stuff like that just to make sure I made more sense, but 
I hope this relates the information more clearly and concisely. <laughs> but I just want to kind of reiterate what we've found through research so far, and that's that we really need to be careful about what we're using, specifically when we're going to high traffic tourist locations. So like vacation destinations on beaches when there's corals nearby. They've already determined that the biggest problems are global warming and the acidification of the ocean. Those are the main things that people need to focus on. A lot of scientists actually believe that this whole sunscreen situation is taking away from the bigger problem. But my way of thinking is just like, if there is even like a small problem over here, why not take care of that as well? It's a more kind of accessible way for everybody to kind of contribute something. So I'm always an advocate for even trying to help even if it's something considered little. So with all that out of the way, I'm gonna start with my sunscreens. <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with the mineral sunscreens and the first one I have is the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen. It's the tinted one. So it's SPF 50 and it's $13.99 for three ounces, but I find you can find it for sometimes under $10 like at Target or some other drugstores. And the main UV filters are going to be titanium dioxide and zinc oxide both at 4%. So one of its most prominent ingredients is shea butter and shea butter is a great all-around ingredient. It has vitamins A, C, and E in it and so it's going to be antioxidant and anti-inflammatory while also evening out the skin tone and providing really rich moisturization. The second most prominent ingredient is really going to be silicones and silicones there's a lot they need to add into sunscreens just to make it the most wearable because UV filters are not very stable and in a formulation it has to be done very well to stabilize those UV filters but as a cosmetic self-care product they have to make it elegant enough for the consumer to want to use. So silicones are often the middle ground for that. They're kind of heavy but they stabilize the UV filters really well and they're good enough to put on the skin without being like totally unwearable. It also has eucalyptus leaf oil in it which is essentially just a fragrance ingredient. You don't really smell anything from this sunscreen so I believe it was put in there mainly as an antioxidant and a calming ingredient. There's also iron oxides which are going to provide the tint that's in this sunscreen and it also protects against blue light. It also has panthenol which is vitamin B5 which is hydrating and calming and red algae which is it has a whole bunch of benefits. Algae releases a carbohydrate that not only provides good slip in a cosmetic formula but it also provides humectant properties, it's anti-aging, it evens out skin tone, There's, it essentially does everything. <laughs> and it also has squalane, which is an oil that's derived from sugarcane. They call it a lotion and I feel like that's a little bit of a stretch because it is thick like a cream. It feels like a cream, it provides really good moisturization. As far as the cast goes, the tint kind of helps combat that, but if you're like at all darker than me, cosmetically, it's not going to perform that well. One thing that's good about this sunscreen is that it actually dries down into a pretty matte finish. And at the price point it's at, it's actually one of my favorite mineral sunscreens. So I would totally recommend it. The second mineral sunscreen I have for you is the Coats Sensitive Skin SPF 40. And this goes for $22.99 for 3.5 ounces. And that's a price I've seen pretty much consistently everywhere. It's really kind of not that easy to find a deal on this. And this is the one that you're going to hate if you have oily skin. It's like wearing a mask of silicone. It's the one I'm wearing right now. I don't mind it because I tend to have drier skin. So I actually like the way it kind of provides an occlusive to hold in moisture. And Coats has a lot of different kinds of mineral sunscreens. They have the flawless complexion one, but the reason why I opted for the sensitive skin with the 40 SPF instead of the 50 that the Flawless Complexion has is because the Flawless Complexion has an ingredient called bismuth oxychloride and you're gonna see on like EWG that it has like a one rating but people tend to have a reaction to it because it has a particular crystalline structure that can actually be very irritating for some people. So I just decided to get rid of it because I read some stuff online about how bad it can be. So this one doesn't have that and it actually has some pretty good ingredients in it. And the main UV filter is going to be zinc oxide at 20%. So if you look at the ingredients for this you're going to find that it's pretty much 
all silicones. So one of the good ingredients you're gonna find in here is glycerin. Glycerin is a humectant that draws water from the air if your skin is drier than the air. And it actually has tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, which is a vitamin C derivative. And I love the idea of having antioxidants in my sunscreen so I don't have to go in before with like an antioxidant serum or something like that. I like combining steps in my skincare to make it as simple as possible. As far as how it wears, it comes out as kind of like a white cream, which I don't know, because it's so full of silicone, I expected it to be clear, but that's beside the point. And it goes on thick. And if you have facial hair like I do, you're gonna notice that you're gonna get kind of a blue look. And what I usually do is like, I'll put it on and then I'll go in with like a tissue or toilet paper and just kind of pat the areas where I have stubble or something and that usually gets rid of that blue hue. And another thing I noticed is that if you're a sweaty person like me, I'm dry and sweaty, it's like the worst combination, but like if I wear this to work, it'll eventually make its way into my eyes and it'll burn. So I'd only plan to wear this if you're oily or a sweaty person like me, if you're gonna be wearing it for maybe like two hours max. Other than that, if you plan to wear it to go running or something like that, just be aware that it could sting the eyes. The Australian Gold Tinted sunscreen does not. It dries down really matte and it stays put, so that one has never irritated my eyes. But I would still recommend it because I feel like it's a good option for those with darker skin. It leaves barely any cast on me. I'm not really sure how it would perform on someone with a way deeper skin tone but I've seen it recommended by others for those with darker skin in other places. So if you have darker skin, I'd give this a try. And also for those with dry skin, it's really occlusive, so it's gonna help keep that moisture in. The next product I have is another mineral sunscreen. It's the MyShell Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. And this has rave reviews on Amazon. It's $18 right now for one ounce. I believe I got it cheaper for that. It, the price, price kind of fluctuates on Amazon. You can also get it at Whole Foods, I believe. But this product has kind of gone through an evolution. It used to come in a pump, but consumers or reviews on Amazon used to say that it was a mess to use. So now it actually comes in this dropper bottle, which I think is interesting because I never thought of using a sunscreen from a dropper bottle. And right off the bat, I'm just going to say that this formulation is weird because it kind of separates a lot. With sunscreens, you usually have to shake them anyway just because sunscreen formulations are weird, but this one more so than others I've noticed. And it's in the, it comes in a few colors. It comes in a darker color. It comes in this shade, which is nude, which I always find it weird when light skin tones are called nude because it's like, it's not applicable to everyone. It's stupid, but um, I got the nude one because I'm lighter in skin tone. This one's also weird because it wears more like a light foundation than a sunscreen. It actually gave me coverage. My face looked a little bit darker than the rest of my body. So if you're gonna buy this, just know that the tint in this is actually fairly strong. It doesn't actually sheer out as much as other tinted sunscreens. And it's in a dropper bottle, so you can obviously kind of assume that it's gonna be a very light, liquidy consistency, and it is. But the thing about that is that Whenever products are really thin, I feel like I have to put more of it to get adequate protection. And because this is so tinted, putting so much of it kind of just makes it feel like you're wearing a face of foundation, which I don't really like. So the main filter in this is gonna be zinc oxide at 16.1%. So this has agave extract, which is gonna act as a humectant and bind water from the air to your skin. It also has safflower oleosomes, which are basically like little capsules with the oil inside of it that's derived from the seeds of the oil. It also has iron oxides, which provides the tint in this formula. And then it has jojoba esters, which provides some moisturization. So I wore this a few times. One time I wore it when I went on a hike and at the end of the day, my skin had the worst texture. It was so dehydrated. And I can't really say if that's because of the sunscreen or just because of the harsh conditions I was in because I was sweating a lot as well. But just kind of all the way around, I really haven't had a good experience with this sunscreen, so I can't really recommend it. So now I'm gonna go through my chemical sunscreens and I'm gonna start with the Hada Lobo. UV white gel with an SPF of 50 and a PA4 pluses. Right now on Amazon, that's where I got it. It goes for $14.48 for around three ounces. And there's a lot of UV filters, so to prevent me getting them wrong, I'm just gonna read them here. It's Octinoxate, Parcel SLX, Tinosorb S, 
eubenol A+, and titanium dioxide. The only other real active ingredient in this is going to be hyaluronic acid. Everything else is just to make sure that the UV filters are stable and then it uh, performs well while not being too heavy. You're gonna notice that like the fifth ingredient in this is alcohol, and the thing about alcohol is it's not a bad ingredient if your skin agrees with it. If you have really dry skin, you're probably not gonna to wanna to use a lot of products with alcohol in it. So for me, I have kind of dry skin. I wore it for like an eight hour period. I noticed at the end that my skin did feel kind of noticeably dry. And that's one of the reasons I wouldn't recommend this for people with dry skin, because the texture at the end of the day for me wasn't what I preferred and I'd used other products before which left me more hydrated at the end of the day. The way this applies is it's basically a gel cream that is white upon application but then shears out until it's transparent. And it's really comfortable to wear but like I said, if you're wearing it for long periods of time, I'd probably recommend putting on a moisturizer under it if you have dry skin. If you have oily skin, you're going to love this because it's not heavy at all. It feels as if it allows your skin to breathe and you're still maintaining that good UV protection. So I would recommend this for people with oily skin or for dry skin if you apply a moisturizer under it. And for the price, I feel like it's a really good value. This next product is probably my favorite sunscreen of all time. It's made me realize that I'm probably never gonna go back to mineral sunscreens ever again. It's the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. And this, it's just so well-rounded. Like it's got a nice creamy texture. If you're dry or oily, it meets right in the middle. It'll be comfortable for everybody to wear. It has two UV filters, Uvenal A+, and Uvenal T150. And that provides a broad spectrum coverage that is totally adequate, even though it's only two UV filters. It's $18.90 on their website, but I found it on Amazon for cheaper. I believe it's $14.90, and it's a two ounce bottle that it comes in. So this also has other good ingredients. It has niacinamide, which niacinamide is basically an all around good ingredient. It provides energy for the cells to function properly. So basically it's gonna even out your skin tone, it's gonna to fade fine lines and wrinkles, and it's gonna make your pores smaller. Also, it's in the name, it has Centella Asiatica extract in it, but not just the extract, it has the derivatives of Centella Asiatica that are much more bioavailable than just simply getting an, an extract from the plant. And there's four of those derivatives, I'm just going to read them because they're really long, and it's Madacasicide, Asiaticicide, Madacasic Acid, and Asiatic Acid. And what all those are going to do is they're going to be extremely antioxidant, they're going to help calm the skin and even out your skin tone. It also has adenosine, which is an amino acid. Amino acids build proteins, which essentially carry out all the functions of your skin. And then it has hyaluronic acid, which is a really popular humectant and most skincare products you see. It'll help bind water from the air and bring it to your skin. Like I already mentioned, this applies so great. It comes out as just like a cream like that and it shears out and it makes you feel adequately moisturized without being too heavy. That's why I it said it's right in the middle for those of you with dry or even oily skin. This is gonna be great because there's also no alcohol in this, which is another reason why I like it. And the two UV filters it has are both reef safe. Actually, one of them's in the unknown category and you have to be careful with that because unknown doesn't mean safe. It just means there's no research yet distinguishing whether it's good or bad, but Uvenal A has been tested. It's known not to really cause any adverse effects for coral reefs. And this also doesn't burn my eyes. The Hada Lava one burns my eyes. And I don't know if it's because of the Octinoxate or because of the alcohol content, because every product I've used with Octinoxate has burned my eyes. So I feel like that's what it is. This is free of that. And because of that, I would recommend, this is probably my favorite sunscreen I've said already, but totally recommend this one. So my top two recommendations, I have a mineral and a chemical one. For the mineral one, it's going to be the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen, the tinted for the face. And for chemical, it's gonna be the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun. I like these both because they're both SPF 50. The Australian Gold uses 4% titanium dioxide and 4% zinc oxide, whereas the Coats one has 20% zinc oxide. So this kind of splits between the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide. And as we know, zinc oxide's been kind of 
labeled as not necessarily reef safe, whereas titanium dioxide is. So I like this one for that reason. It doesn't burn my eyes and the tint kind of makes it more cosmetically elegant. And as for this one, Uvenal A, Uvenal T150, most likely not gonna cause any adverse re reactions from coral reefs, Uvenal A for sure. Uh, also doesn't burn my eyes and the texture, you just can't beat this texture. This is heavy and it dries down matte. This is essentially like you're putting on a moisturizer. It's the most comfortable sunscreen I've ever worn and I feel adequately protected with it. So that's gonna be my sunscreen video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you get around to trying some of these out. It's been a long journey for me with finding a good sunscreen because like I said, I sweat a lot. They tend to move around on my face. So I've managed to find some gems that work for me and I hope they work for you as well. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, I'd encourage you to subscribe below and Follow me on Instagram at rickskin underscore. There I do some mini reviews, I do some texture shots, and some demos that you won't necessarily see here. Sometimes I'll post product reviews there that I'll do before here. So if that interests you, feel free to follow me there. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.